Today is December the 10th. <clears throat> it's a very important day to me. It's a day that I set aside and I basically dedicate all of my thoughts to my friend Todd. Todd died on this day in 2003 in Iraq. He was my machine gunner. He was one of my best friends. Todd is probably the best man that I ever met. It's difficult to put into words how special of a person he was. I think the story I want to tell you guys this year is about his love and how he loved unconditionally to an extent that I could never do because he was a better man than I am. The story that I want to talk about today is one that very few people have ever heard. It's a version of the story that I've been carrying with me all these years. And I've been reluctant to share and I've actually been told not to share this story by some of my closest friends. But I think it's important because it shows the man that Todd was. The night that Todd died on the Tigris River in Baghdad, Iraq, there was another man on that boat that fell into the water before him. He dove in the water to try to save that man. The man that fell in the water that night is someone who I have refused to say his name for the last 19 years. His name was Aaron Reese. When, when we deployed to Iraq, Todd was my machine gunner. I was his team leader and Aaron Reese was my squad leader. I have a hard time putting into words my feelings for Aaron Reese <clears throat> without using the word hatred. Aaron and I were not friends. We did not get along. I didn't believe that he was competent. I didn't believe that he should have been in the military and I didn't think he should have been on that deployment. There was a variety of things that he did. Well, I want to step back for a moment. One of the reasons that I've been so reluctant to tell this story and that I've been, I'd been convinced not to tell this story is because these men are dead and what is in the past is in the past is what people are telling me that these men have families and that their, their families don't need to hear a story that's going to tarnish the memory of their loved one. My perspective on that is that, um, Todd had a family and Aaron had a family. Todd's family deserves to know what happened. Todd's family deserves to know why he died that night. Aaron's family also deserves to know the truth about what happened that night. What kind of man he was when he served. The criticism that I've received over the years from my friends was that <clears throat> you can't say these things about Aaron Reese because his his children were young at the time and they believed that their dad died a hero and you can't ruin for that for them. Um, I don't know. I know that my dad died when I was young. I definitely never believed he was a hero, but it's important that I know the truth about him. And I think it, it's important that they know the truth too. Um, they might not believe a single word that comes out of my mouth, but it's the truth. This isn't like an, a, a thing where I'm going to sit here and um, just talk bad about a man for 10, 15 minutes to try to make my friend look good. But I do want to tell the truth about what was going on. 
And one particular instance that I want to talk about, <clears throat> which there were many, was uh, a mission that Aaron Reese was on as a squad leader where he showed such a level of cowardice that he was immediately relieved of his position. I'm not going to go into a lot of the details about it, but it's something that happened while we were in Iraq. Um, it's also an incident that I was put in charge of gathering statements from everybody who was on that mission that day that were supposed to be turned in and be part of the investigation that was going to have him permanently relieved of duty. Unfortunately, my platoon uh, was an MP platoon that in, and in 2003, Iraq, there was some weird thinking that MPs were very versatile type of troops and that we needed to be shipped all over the place to do different missions. So a couple of days after I gathered up statements from everybody in the platoon who was on that mission, who saw Aaron Reese's act of extreme cowardice, um, I got, I was in charge of that investigation. I gathered up all those statements and turned them in. And then we packed up all of our stuff, went to another chain of command and that stuff all disappeared. And Aaron Reese was put back in charge of me as my squad leader to which there was a certain level of retaliation against me, um, that led to me eventually being put in a different platoon. I was very outspoken with my opinion that he was not, that he was dangerous and that if he continued to go on missions and serve in the way that he had, that he would get somebody killed. As a matter of fact, most of the statements that I turned in from my fellow soldiers said that same thing on them. So eventually I was moved to another platoon so that I could no longer fight and argue with him. And the mission continued just like it had before. On the night of December 10th, 2003, that was to be our final night of missions in Iraq. We had orders to return to Kuwait so that we could be um, sent back home. And our teardown period or whatever you want to call it was to begin the next day. Sergeant Aaron Reese and specialist Todd Bates were assigned to an Iraqi police riverboat patrol where they sat in a boat with, I believe it was Iraqi drivers and there was multiple boats on the river. They would go up and down the Tigris between the green zone and the rest of Baghdad and make sure that nobody crossed over the river at night just as an additional security. The guys who got on those boats knew that it wasn't safe. They complained that there weren't any life vests available. There weren't um, rescue ropes available, that it was a dangerous mission. The Tigris river is dangerous. If you fall in, it's dangerous. Um, Soldiers in the army are not trained on how to swim. Most of us know how to swim, but it's not something that we're trained to do. The guys who worked on those boats grew accustomed to when they got on the boat, they would undo their vest. They would undo their vest and they would be prepared that if they were to fall overboard, they knew that they would be stripping their vest and that would give them the best chance of survival. <clears throat> Sergeant Reese was not one of those people. Sergeant Reese kept his vest completely tight. Not only was it um, buttoned and Velcroed up tight, but he had a bunch of other stuff on his vest that was not necessary. I remember he had a camelback on the back of his um, body armor that he had the uh, nozzle wrapped around the hand, the carrying handle that he never used. He had a lot of stuff on there that he didn't use. On the night of December 10th, 2003, for one reason or another, 
Aaron Reese, a man that I don't believe should have been in his position, should not have been out on missions, fell off the boat into the water. He was wearing his um, body armor with ammo pouches. He sank like a rock. Todd Bates, being the hero that he is, stripped off his gear and went in after him. It's my belief that Todd was able to catch up to Sergeant Reese. And he was trying to help him get out of his gear. And I also believe that Aaron Reese was holding on to Todd, hoping to climb up him and achieve rescue. I, I strongly believe that Aaron Reese fell in the water weighted down with extra equipment. And when Todd jumped in to save him, he pulled Todd to the bottom. They both drowned. Over the years, I've talked to members of Todd's family, his extended family, his friends. I've never spoken to a member of Sergeant Aaron Reese's family. I refuse to. There's been a lot of questions and conspiracies and stuff going around about what happened. Um, confusion because... The family wasn't allowed to see his body. The reason they couldn't see his body is because he was in the water for 14 days before we found him. He wasn't shot. It wasn't anything like that. There was no cover up. The only cover up in a sense was the fact that Aaron Reese should not have been on duty that night and everybody knew it. I was very outspoken against him during that entire year. The fact that I was unable to get him removed and that he eventually killed one of my best friends. Something I'll never be able to forgive myself for. But today is the day that I dedicate to Todd, his memory, and how perfect of a man he was. He literally sacrificed his life trying to save a man that I hated with a passion. <laughs>